Welcome to Pathway, we're so glad you're with us today. If you're new here, we'd love to get to know you. We invite you to fill out a digital connect card on the PCC at Home app or pccfw.tv or text the word connect to Pathway text number. To all of you who have continued to give support financially during this time, we wanna say thank you. We're so grateful and we want you to know that from online worship to Pathway groups to community outreach, your generosity has made ministry possible. If you'd like to give, there are several ways you can do that. There are give buttons on our website at pccfw.tv and on the PCC at Home mobile app. You can also text the word give to our text number or you can mail a check to the PCC office. For all the latest COVID-related updates, be sure to visit our website. Just click the red banner at the top of the page to view new announcements and find quick links for Kid City Online, content for students, adults, and more. You can also access all of this through the COVID link on the PCC at Home app. As always, our services will continue to air at pccfw.tv, so if your health is vulnerable, we hope you'll continue to be part of our online community. Thanks again for choosing to show up here. Well, good morning. Uh, my name is Dan Litweiler. I'm one of the pastors here at Pathway. I get the priv privilege of working with life groups like Brent mentioned earlier. And I also get uh, the privilege of, of being one of the pastors up in the venue community uh, with Gordon and Olga. And we just love being a part of Pathway and what Jesus is doing here. And so we just love uh, being with you. So it's a privilege to share out of God's word with you this morning. I just want to continue uh, the prayer that's sort of been going on as we've been singing and praying this morning. And I just want to just continue to pray over our time this morning. Jesus, I just ask that um, as we open your word, that you uh, would be faithful to speak and to move. And it is through your Holy Spirit that we trust that you're going to do that. Let my words be your words um, this morning, God, uh, the words that you would have me say, God. And I just ask you would work here and move here. God, change us through the power of your spirit and through your word, we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. I was reflecting this past week a little bit uh, over the, about the last year, year and a half, and I, was, I was the, had this question kind of milling through my mind, and I thought the same question I just want to pose to you guys today is, do you remember when you realized that the pandemic was going to be much bigger than you kind of thought it was in the first place? I, I heard this, uh, like this question asked before, like, do we think this is going to be a winter? Uh, maybe this is actually more of a blizzard? You know, or is this like, like just kind of like a winter storm or is it a blizzard or maybe it's actually an ice age. And I remember early on, we're like, ah, I think it's just a storm. It's going to blow over. And then eventually we're like, I guess it's an ice age. Like it just, it seems to have lasted forever. Uh, I was at a conference in March of 2020 in Florida. And I remember coming back to Fort Wayne. And that to me was the point when I felt like suddenly it was in our backyard and this wasn't going away, but it was something that was affecting us here differently than it had. And it was, it was much broader and bigger um, than I thought. And I felt like my wife and I are not like big news people. We just don't like watching the news. We don't watch uh, like we don't like watch like cable TV or anything like that. And so like, but we started watching news on YouTube and like different like ways that we could kind of pull that up online. And it felt like every single thing we saw was bad news. And then every day it was like, hey, guess what? Here's some more bad news. And here's some more bad news. It just kept stacking. Up. I think news is already all bad, pretty much. Anyone agree with me? I think that's how they get, you know, your attention or whatever. Uh, but we still watch it. Anyway, I don't know what's wrong with us as a, as a people. But here's the point. It just kept being more and more and more bad news. And then in March of 2020, John Krasinski, who played Jim in The Office, he had this news network on YouTube uh, called Some Good News. And the, the premise of it was that all they were going to share was good news. It was going to be only good news stories and only like encouraging, uplifting stuff. And I felt like for our family and for anyone else that was watching this at the same time, we could take this like collective deep like breath and exhale. And we're just like, yes, thank you for, for the life of me. Someone is finally sharing some news that is good because I thought we were all feeling just the weight of that moment in history together. We were all inundated with bad news. 
And here's the deal, guys. The reality of bad news, and I think which also drives our desire for good news, is that uh, it's always kind of been part of our, for the most part, it's been, been, a, been a part of our story, and it's just kind of part of life. Now, I know that's a little bit of a tri- depressing way of starting this, but I do have a point to this. Uh, and on a practical basis, here's the deal. We experience bad news in these broader senses, like a, like a pandemic that affects the whole world, right? Everyone's experiencing bad news together, but we also experience bad news just in our lives on a daily basis. There are definitely days and weeks, months, maybe years where Life is hard. I mean, stuff is just not what you would have planned on. Things happen. Listen, as a parent of young kids that were just home, we, our boys were on break already the last, this last week uh, from school. All the transitions that go with that, it felt like some bad news the first couple of days as they were, anybody? If, if your kids just got out like this Friday, just wait, it's coming, okay? Um, but it'll get better. I'm already past that. Sorry. Okay. So, but as Christ followers, here's the, here's the deal. There's a much broader picture, a much bigger perspective than just all of the bad news that we need to be aware of. And that's this. In the present with all the bad news is some really, really, really good news that we were created for. There's something that's much better, something that's more beautiful, something that's actually way more fulfilling. And this is the kind of good news that you can't keep to yourself. I'm a firm believer that that good news is one thing, but good news is actually much better if you share it with somebody else. Do you agree with me? You don't have to agree with me, but I think it's true. Okay, like, and here, here's what I mean. I want to illustrate that for you for a minute. For example, if you, uh, have you ever worked towards a project or some like really big goal or something that you just, dr- you drove towards, and when you finally reached it, you could not wait to tell everybody you met and knew about that good news. So for us, we've been, been done for about a, like two weeks now, but our back patio on our house, we bought our house about a year ago, and uh, on our back patio, the left side of the patio is really nice. It was just laid perfectly well, the stones and the pavers and everything looked really good. And then the right side, it was like kind of halfway through, and this whole right section looked like they just got tired and gave up. And I thought, what happened? And in the middle, like r- starting that right section was this really big, it's actually a stock tank. Like think, don't think pretty planter, think stock tank with dirt in it and flowers coming out of it. And so we said, okay, that's a next year, next summer project that we'll get to. So in the spring, like after Easter, uh, the Monday after Easter, my, par- my parents were visiting and my dad and I are like, okay, it's time. We're going to move the stock tank. So we dragged the thing over and start to move some pavers and the rocks underneath it. And then I realized why the stock tank was there in the first place being used as a planter. It wasn't because it was just really pretty. It's because it was big and it was covering up a tree stump that was like this. <laughs> well, guess what? I already moved it. Like I was already committed and I was already into the project. So we just go ahead and pick up the rest of the pavers. And then we dig out around the tree stump. And that's when we realized how absolutely massive it was. So I started to try and like take it out with a hatchet and a maul. It's like an axe slash sledgehammer. And I'm like, all right, look at this physique, right? I can do this. And so why are you laughing? And so anyway, I'm like going after it. And then eventually I'm, I give up. And, and so we rented a stump grinder. It took four and a half hours to get this thing out. A regular size tree took me 10 minutes. So if that tells you anything. Uh, and so we get it out. And then we have to dig out the ground to like the right grade. And then I actually did it too, too low. We're bringing in rock. I'm going somewhere with this, compacting it down. And then we get three or four loads more rock than we originally anticipated, which is great. So delivery fee, delivery fee, delivery fee. Okay, so we get all the rock in, and then we're putting the pavers back on. We're t- tamping everything down, leveling it out. Eventually, there's, I'm, I made a, we made it bigger. Why not? So there's like a half circle that I'm cutting pavers you know, on you know, with a grinder and like a diamond blade. I'm doing every, trying to do everything right. Eventually, we get to the point where I get, to, I get to put sand, like the poly sand over it. We wet it down, and then it's done. Oh, yeah, there's a retaining wall in there, too. Okay, so and then it's done. <laughs> it's finished. And I was telling every single person that I knew about it. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Oh, that's so great. I love that story. Would you like to see a picture of my patio? Like, I'm, not, like, I'm in the drive-thru at McDonald's. And I'm like, yes, I would take my soda. Would you like to see a picture of my patio? I didn't care. I was so excited because it was really good news for me because there had been a lot of sort of hard, bad news in the process. And it was five weeks of every single day that I had off and every hour after work until it was dark. And I would just, there was a week in there where eventually, I think it was week four, where I just started taking Advil before I went to sleep every night because my body hurt. I added three decades to myself. Like it was, but I was so excited about it. And it was just a patio. 
right? It was super good news to me, but it was just a stupid patio. Like, who really cares that much about it in, in the, the picture of eternity? Here's where I'm going. As Christ followers, we have amazingly good news about Jesus. It is undoubtedly the best good news that we could possibly share with somebody. In fact, if they're not in a relationship with Jesus, I would say this is the one thing that they need most. But the reality about that is that the good news about Jesus is difficult. It's hard for most of us to share most of the time. It's often just something that we just don't do because we feel like it's so difficult to share. But it's way more important than what I did to my back patio. Here's the thing. It does not change the fact that the best invitation that we could possibly extend to someone today is to become a disciple of Jesus. So that's our big idea for this week, and it's this. It's the best invitation we could extend to someone today is to become a disciple of Jesus. Now, what I'm not saying is this. I'm not saying that a relationship with Jesus will solve all of your problems. This is not a health and wealth kind of thing like, hey, if you trust Jesus, your bank account will suddenly swell up and like everything will be better. That's not true. Could Jesus do that for you? Sure. I mean, he could do anything he wants, but that's not how it works. That's not what I'm saying. But I am saying the one relationship that every single man, woman, child that has been created has exists for and is made for is a relationship with Jesus. And we will all be unfulfilled outside of that relationship. Have you heard uh, the saying before, preach Jesus and if necessary, uh, use words? Has anyone heard that before? I've, I've heard this different times. It's attributed to some different people. Uh, and I want to say that it's kind of a good statement, like, but I feel like it's really actually only halfway true. I think it sounds good. It sounds like this idea of if I just live this really good life and I'm a really kind person and I pay my taxes on time and I'm nice to the neighbor next to me, that people will just kind of like pick up on my Jesus aura, and they'll just want to know Jesus too. I can just live this good life, and that will do everything, which I think is sort of halfway true. But I think the, a more full version of this would be to live in such a way that when we talk about Jesus, our words mean something. You know what I mean? Like, preach Jesus with your actions, but do so in such a way that when you open your mouth about Jesus, your words actually have weight. And that's what the blessed rhythms that we talked about this past month um, are all about. It's the idea of actually practicing these certain rhythms of life in the circles where God's placed us. So that when we have an opportunity to share about Jesus, we have something to say. We believe that the practice of actually sharing the good news about Jesus is so central to being a follower of Jesus that we're going to spend the whole next month um, just talking about the last S in bless. It's the idea of sharing God's story. So we already covered um, beginning with prayer and listening and eating and serving. And so this next month, we're really focusing in on sharing God's story with other people. We're going to do that through teaching, uh, through the book of Acts. And uh, here's this cool thing. On the weekends, we're going to talk through this. And our challenge for you as a congregation, for us, is a group of people that are following Jesus here that call Pathway Home. We want all, us all to be reading through the book of Acts over the month of June. Now, there's uh, 28 chapters in Acts. There's 30 days in June. The math is pretty close. You get a couple of gimmies in there if you miss a day or two. Um, but it would, I just really excited to see what happens as us as a, as, as a group of people together, we read through the same passage of scripture and then we're just going to be teaching through that on the weekends. In Acts, we get this front row seat and we watch the church actually blossom and grow and take shape explosively even in the midst of persecution that's taking place. And it all happens through the sharing of good news. And so we're going to zoom in on a few interactions of people that, that are followers of Jesus sharing good news about Jesus with the people that they're in circles with and they interact with. But here's how we're going to start. Before we jump into Acts, uh, even this morning, I just want to start, talk uh, about the bigger story of the gospel, the bigger story of the good news. There's kind of this bigger story that plays out this whole time that all of this really ties into. And there's kind of four main words that you'll see in your outline. And the first one we're going to start with is this. It's the idea of creation. We were all, all of us, every single one of us, created for a relationship with God. That is his design for us. And here, like what we're talking about, we all experience bad news and hard times. But let me, let me tell you, that's not the original intention. That's not what we were intended to experience. In the beginning, God created everything and his creation that he brought about was flawless. I mean, it was perfect, unadulterated. There was no sickness. There was no disease. There was no sadness. Everything was perfect. And everything lived in perfect harmony. The idea that Adam and Eve enjoyed perfect relationships with God and they enjoyed perfect relationships with one another. 
uh, in Genesis 2.25, it describes that this way, and it says they were both naked, and yet they felt no shame. Just don't, like, don't miss this. Like, this is like the beginning of the Bible. We've heard this probably a bunch, but trust me, they were buck naked, but they felt no shame because there was nothing to be ashamed of. There was no sin in the picture at that point in time. And God, had, when he had finished creating, he looked at everything that he had made, and he said, it is very good. Let me tell you, when God says something is good, it's good. And when he says it's very good, it's very good. The Hebrew word for what Adam and Eve would have been experiencing at that point in time is this biblical word, this idea of shalom. It says circumstances that are unblemished, that are absolutely perfect. There's no defect. Ultimate perfection and harmony. There's no divide between the presence of God and the presence of man. His original intention, his design, was perfect unity between him and us, perfect unity between us and each other, and perfect unity between us and the world that he created. But here's the thing. Things did not stay that way. So the next idea that we get into in that bigger story is fall. It's the fall of man. Adam and Eve chose to disobey what God desired for them. And because of that, every, like, hiding shame and blame all became part of human history. That relationship that they had with God. If you picture this being God and Adam and Eve, that relationship originally was designed for this perfection and unity. There was no separation. And at the point of sin, that relationship literally was torn apart and separation came between God and man. And we've all experienced this exact same separation. We're all sinners. Sin is any lack of conformity to the moral character of God or the law of God. And because God is perfect, to be in a relationship with him, we have to be perfect. But everybody, all people everywhere, with the exception of Jesus, have sinned. Romans 3.23 describes it this way. It says that for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And here's the deal. Sin has had this multiplicative effect where it has not only separated us from God, but as a result, it's bred brokenness and disease, and sickness, and sadness. We're created for this one perfect, beautiful thing, and, and yet we're experiencing something completely different. Now, I have a way that I wanted to illustrate this for you that I hope would just make it like crystal clear. So the way that I would describe what we're created for, but what we're experiencing is this. We're like, imagine your perfect day. Now, since I'm the one speaking this weekend, I get to talk about my perfect day, and you just have to take it as your perfect day, and if you don't like it, get your own perfect day. But my perfect day would look something like this. There would be sci-fi, like a movie marathon, like Jurassic Park, perhaps, that I get to watch all day long, you know, of dinosaurs chasing and eating people. Sounds pretty great. Uh, maybe the third movie's not as good, but it's fine. It's, it's part of the, the package, okay? So there would be Jurassic Park, sci-fi movie, something, marathon, all day long. And with that, I would be sitting on my couch in the basement eating a Shake Shack chicken sandwich. Anybody in this room had Shake Shack? Let me tell you what. Yeah, this, yeah, that's right. Amen, right? If, if you haven't, uh, get down to, I think Fisher's is the closest place over by Indianapolis. You can grab one today in about two hours. Okay, so, uh, so good. I would be sitting there having a chicken sandwich from Shake Shack, maybe a burger and some cheese fries. Maybe I'd be sick afterwards, but I'd be really happy. Okay, so I'm watching sci-fi. I'm eating Shake Shack, and this is Ollie. Isn't he cute? That's our new puppy. He'd be, he's not small, he's big. He'd be sitting next to me on the couch uh, after I finished my Shake Shack because we're still working on training. And if he was next to me while I was eating it, he'd eat some of it like he stole my nachos last night. I almost didn't mention him this morning because he stole my nachos. <laughs> shame on you. I told him I was going to shame him. He didn't understand. Okay, so sci-fi, Shake Shack, Ollie's sitting next to me watching sci-fi movies. That is that this perfect day, right? And yet, what if instead of that, I'm exchanged a completely different day where I am forced to watch a Caillou marathon all day long? <laughs> Thank you. Some people in this room have watched Caillou. You have kids or grandkids or you know somebody. If you've never watched this, consider yourself extremely blessed. It's the most annoying kid show to ever have been produced. I think it's off the air now because it's terrible. There, there are entire forums online, by the way, of people that hate Caillou. Okay. <laughs> and then I would have to eat Brussels sprouts instead of Shake Shack sad. Okay. They smell like, I don't want to say, okay. And then instead of my dog on the couch, there's murder hornets flying around the living room. Are you guys familiar with murder hornets? This is a gift of 2020. They're like two inches. That's maybe more, but they're like two inches big and they rip bees heads off because murder hornet. Okay. So created for one thing, but experiencing something completely different. 
In the beginning, Adam and Eve had this experience. Oh, by the way, before I move on, this is my greatest nightmare. <laughs> yeah. If you have a nightmare tonight, it's going to be Caillou's head on a murder hornet. You're welcome. Okay. In the beginning, Adam and Eve experienced perfect relationship with God. They had conversations with him in the garden in the cool of the day. No separation in relationship. But because of sin, we're experiencing something completely different. Are you with me? Created for one thing, experiencing something else. And that's why the next part of the bigger story is such good news for us. It's redemption. Out of his immense love for us, his creation, God chose to enter into our mess in the flesh, in the person of Jesus Christ. And what Jesus did is he appeased or he satisfied the punishment for our sins to remove the gap that was created between us and because of sin, between us and God. And he redeemed us through his life, his death, and his resurrection. Redemption is defined this way. It's an action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. Jesus because of the payment that Jesus did, he, he has regained that relationship that we had lost with the Father. And therefore, the separation no longer has to take place. But because of Jesus, he's a touch point between us and God. Through Jesus' work on our behalf, we're offered forgiveness of our sins and we regain the relationship with God. It's because of Jesus' perfect sacrifice that a God that says, you can't be in a relationship with me unless you're perfect, that he sees us in Christ as perfect. And that leads to the last part of the bigger story. It's restoration. We are invited to respond to the work of Jesus, redemptive work on our behalf, and we get to join God in relationship, and we get to join God in his plan. 1 John 4.15 describes that thought this way. It says, whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Picture this. I mean, before we're talking about separation between us and God and now because of the work of Jesus Christ on our behalf, when our faith and our trust is placed in Jesus, now it says that God abides in us and us in God. No longer is there a divide, but the, the gap has been bridged because of Jesus and we're in a relationship with God. And when we become part of God's family, we also become connecting points between God and the broken world around us. Understand this, we actually get to join Jesus in his work of restoring all things. And I, I just want to kind of touch on this idea really quickly that we have to get away from this thought that a decision to follow Christ um, means that we, we join him, uh, sorry, the decision to follow Christ mean, it doesn't just affect our eternity, but affects what happens right now. I, when I grew up, I, the church that I grew up in, it was actually a, a good church, but sometimes I had a Sunday school teacher, you guys remember Sunday school, like they would, they would teach this idea of, it felt a lot more like fire insurance. They would just kind of say, listen, there's a bad place and a good place. If you accept Jesus, you get to go to the good place. If you don't, you go to the bad place. And I'm like, I don't want to go to hell. That doesn't sound good. I just want to help you like understand today, like let's grap grapple with this idea that accepting Christ is not just about not going to the bad place and going to the good place. We have to get away from that idea. But being a follower of Jesus means that we join him in the work of restoring all of creation to the way that it was intended to be today. As a Christ follower, every moment, every interaction that we have is an opportunity to join Jesus in his kingdom come or not. 2 Corinthians 5.17 describes it this way, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... The new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. And then he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. We've all been invited to receive God's redeeming work on our, ourselves, but also to pass it on to other people. And that's why the best invitation that we could possibly extend to someone today is to become a disciple of Jesus. We're going to look at the first few verses in Acts over the next couple of moments that we have, and we're just going to see how we begin to extend this invitation to other people. I just want to start in chapter one of Acts in the first verse in this. Uh, Luke just picks up where he ended off um, at, the, at the end of his gospel. And he says, in the first book of Theophilus, I've dealt with all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the last day when he was taken up. And after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself to them alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them over 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. And he continues on at the end of that verse. And he says, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Here's the first thing. The first thing that I think we can kind of take out of this passage is that we hang out where Jesus tells us to. Jesus ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. 
He says, here's what I'm going to have you do because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be with you physically in, in the person any longer. But what I need you to do is I want you to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father, the promise of the Holy Spirit. As you listen to the Spirit of God and as he leads you at where he has called you, your job is to put yourself uh, in proximity to the people he's called you. You remember when Brad was talking a couple weeks ago and he was talking about, we had those cards at the end of, the, out of his message and he said, Jesus has been a friend to me, right? A sinner. So I wrote, it's my name, Dan, on that side. And the other side, it's Dan, a friend to. Whatever name you wrote or whatever names you wrote on that card, those, those are the places where Jesus says, go to those places and wait. Wait for my promise. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Like, wait for my leading. Wait for the next step. Put yourself in proximity to people who are far from me and wait there. And Brian last week was talking about serving people in the same way that Jesus served. And the example that Jesus gave to us, that's what you practice while you're waiting in those places of proximity to these people. Pray for them. Listen to them. Eat with them. Serve them. Here's what I want you to do. Like, listen to the idea of practicing bless that we talked about. Open up your schedule. Allow yourself to be interruptible. I don't know about you. That sometimes is really hard for me. Sometimes I don't want to be uncomfortable and I don't want to be interrupted. But, some, but often the Spirit of God says, listen, I want you to become uncomfortable and, and I want you to be interruptible so that I can actually do something really good in the lives of the people around you. Now, I'm not saying loiter in your neighbor's yard and get a restraining order, but with your name on it. But do join Jesus in the work of what he's doing. Don't just pull in your driveway and close the door. Or when it's work, like if you're working, it's around the water cooler, like actually hang out and have some conversations. Like wherever Jesus is calling you to be, hang out in those places. In verse 6, Luke continues. He says, So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but... You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The next thing I just want to pull out of this this morning is that we share through the power of the Holy Spirit. We cannot shortcut this. We cannot make this less than what it actually is. When, the, when God presents an opportunity to share, we can actually share about who he is through the power of his spirit at work within us. Ephesians 3.20 says, Paul, in, in Ephesians 3.20, Paul says that God is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask, think, or imagine through the power at work within us. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, if you have placed your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then the spirit of the living God dwells within you. Did you get that? The spirit of the living God actually dwells within you if you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus. If you're scared to share about Jesus, that's okay. If you feel unqualified, awesome. So do I. If you have placed your faith and trust in Jesus, then, then the spirit of God lives inside of you. And through the, the spirit of God, you can share about what Jesus has done for you, who he is, and what he's doing in your life. And the last thing I think we want to see, we see in verse 8 is this, that we share our account. We share our account of what Jesus has done and is doing in our life. When we share about Jesus, we're actually giving an eyewitness account. In verse 8, when it says the word witnesses, what it actually means is an eyewitness or an ear witness. It's this idea of testifying to what we have seen, uh, what we've actually experienced, right? It's, it's judicial language. It's language that could be used in court. You know, it's not, this is what somebody else saw, not this is something that I heard. This is not just something that I read. This is what I have experienced. This has been my personal experience. I saw this with my own eyes. I heard this with my own ears. Thomas, uh, Dr. Thomas Constable says this about the disciples in verse 8, that they were now to be witnesses, and their definite work was to bear testimony to their master. They were not to be theologians or philosophers or leaders, but witness. Whatever else they might become, everything else was subordinate to the idea of personal testimony. Later on in Luke, uh, uh, later on in Acts, Luke records an interaction that Peter and John have with the Jewish religious leaders. They have been preaching and teaching and talking about Jesus and doing miracles like in boldly because of the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. And because they were doing this, the religious leaders didn't like it, just like they didn't like Jesus. And so they arrest them and they're talking with them and they're warning them. And eventually they release them because they, they can't keep them held because what, what's been happening has been obvious to all the people. But after threatening them uh, not to talk anymore about Jesus, their response is this, we cannot help but talk, but speaking about what we have seen and what we have heard. When you have an opportunity to share about Jesus with somebody else, share what you have seen, 
Share what he's doing in your life. Let me tell you what, this idea that I've been, as I've been wrestling with for the last couple of weeks is really convicting when I think about, Jesus, what have, you, what have you done in my life? What are you doing in my life? Am I, am I walking with you in such a way that I have fresh, life-giving things to share with other people out of my relationship with you? Okay, guys, here's what, I, what we thought would maybe the most helpful um, thing that we could possibly do with the remainder of of our time this morning is that we thought the best thing we could do is just to spend some time in prayer as a group of people. So this is, if you're at home, if you're in the room, if you're upstairs in the venue, here's what we're going to do. Because sharing about Jesus happens um, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to start by saying we want to ask the Holy Spirit to do something good in us and to guide us and for us to be able to listen to him and for him to show us where he would have us be. Because it involves waiting where Jesus uh, called us to wait. I, I think we need to lean into Jesus in relationship in such a way that we know where he would have us hang out. And because it starts with our account of what he's done, done or is doing in us, then man, we need to be asking Jesus, like, what are you, what have you done for me? Like, what, like really dwell on that. Like, what have you done in my life? And what are you doing in my life right now? And what are you trying to do in my life right now? So the band is, is going to come up, or they're probably already up here, and they're going to play for the next several minutes. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you a few prompts on how we can approach God in these next few moments. We're going to have them on the screen, and I'm just going to say them out loud. And we're just going to give you some time um, to pray. And we're going to do the, several of these together. If you're upstairs in the venue, uh, Gordon and the team upstairs is going to run with this um, at this point. If you're online joining us, we just want to encourage you to do the exact same thing we're going to do in this room. You know, wherever you are, whatever space you're in, if you need to find a quieter space, this is a great time to go find a quieter uh, place or space um, to pray. Here in the room, guys, I'm going to, if it, I don't want you to be uncomfortable, I just want to invite you to this way. You can either just stay seated just as you are as we're praying in these next few moments. I also want to invite you if, you, if you want to, you can turn around, you can kneel at your chair wherever you are. Um, just how you feel comfortable. We want to spend some time um, talking with Jesus. But one thing I do want to encourage every single person in the room to do is this. Uh, when we're praying over these next five minutes, I just want you to, to be able to extend your hands out like this. And this is a posture with my palms up. And the idea is that we're just saying, Jesus, I really want you to do something. I want you to work in me and move in me. And I, I'm really willing and wanting to hear from you. I want to receive from you. But it's also a way of saying, God, I'm not going to hold on to anything tightly. But everything I have and who I am and what's, what you're doing in my life, I want to hold loosely and say, Jesus, if you want to take something, you can. And I want you to be able to do what you want to do in my life. So these prompts are going to be on the screen. Um, and I'm going to read them. And then we're just going to give you a minute. I'm going to set a timer on my phone. And then and we're just going to pray through these um, as we go this morning. Here's the first one, guys. I want you to ask the Spirit of God to help you do some self-examination. We just spend the first few moments asking God something like this. Father, please reveal to me the genuine state of my soul. Remind me about what you have done in my life. Remind me that you have saved me from much. I was thinking about this morning. Jesus, you have saved me from so much. But you have also saved me for much. And also you could pray this as well. Father, show me the vibrancy or the lack of vibrancy in my relationship with you now. Okay, just take a minute, minute and a half, and we just want you to spend some time in prayer. Um, go ahead.
that God had just through his spirit just been encouraging you and saying, like, you know what? I just love that your relationship with me is, is thriving. This is the next few moments. I just want to encourage you just to thank God for that. Praise him for that. Celebrate that with him, that he's just given such life to you and your relationship and you're able to walk with him in that way. And I also encourage you just to pray um, for folks around you that may not be experiencing that um, with him right now. I also want to say, like, if you feel that you don't have much to share about Jesus because you haven't been very connected with him, just take a moment in, in this next minute to confess that to Jesus. You can pray David's prayer that I have prayed many times in my life. It's Psalm 51, 12, and he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing or an obedient spirit to sustain me. God, please restore, remind me of what you've done in my life and bring fresh wind and fresh life to me, Jesus. Draw me close. And if you don't have a relationship with God today, I cannot encourage you enough that this is the best time today to place your faith and your trust in Jesus. If it's been clear to you that you, you don't have that relationship, we would love to have a conversation with you. If you're in the room after the service is over, come have a conversation with some of the folks down front that, would, front that would love to pray with you. They would love to walk alongside of you in this and talk through what it means to place your trust in Jesus and follow him with your life. If you're online, you can, you can ask for a prayer. You can join in the chat. You can, there's a salvation moment button you can click. Don't, don't leave that here. Reach out to someone. This is the best time to follow Jesus. Either celebrate your relationship with him, confess to him now this morning, or, or wrestle with the fact that maybe you need to be in a relationship with Jesus. Let's spend another minute um, just praying right now. just to ask the Spirit of God to show us where He's at work around us. Where we live, where we learn, where we work, where we play, the circles where Jesus has placed us. I believe He's placed us in certain places for, for a reason. God, where you've placed me in relationship with other people, where are you working? What are you doing around me? And Jesus, how can I join you? So just spend a minute and a half, just, just asking the Spirit of God to show you where He's working around you and how you can join Him. Just ask those questions and just listen to Jesus this morning.
Next thing we want to do is just want to ask this last, ask the Holy Spirit to fill us with his words so that we, when we have an opportunity, when it's clear that we have an opportunity to share and I, our eyewitness account of what Jesus is doing in our life, to share just a piece of that bigger story or the story of what he's done in us, that God will fill us with his words so that what we share will be what he would have us share. You can pray something like this. Jesus, as I join you, please fill me with your words. God, please do a new thing in me so that I have much to share about you when I have the opportunity. Let's ask God these things in the next minute. Jesus, uh, my prayer this morning, God, is that as you are working and as you are moving and as you have been speaking, God, uh, to us, your people, today, God, that we are listening. Jesus, help us to continue to practice a lifestyle, God, of leaning into you, leaning into your spirit with ears to hear, God. And God, help us to be people that have much to share. And God, help us to speak boldly and clearly about who you are and what you've done and what you're doing, God, trusting that it's through your spirit. God, that we do that. Jesus, I ask that in the circles of influence where you've placed us, Jesus, that you would do something significant and something amazing through the work of your spirit. Jesus, let, let your people, God, leave wherever they are today, God, empowered. God, let your people leave with a fresh spirit, God. Let, let them leave refreshed. God, may people that don't know you experience new life in you, God, because you're doing something in us. Jesus, we ask and we pray for you to start in doing that, something new in us even today, in this moment. You're good. We praise you and we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Guys, it's so great to worship with you this morning. If you have any questions about a relationship with Jesus, please, if you're online, you can chat with the folks there. If you're in the room, uh, come up to the front. There's folks that would love to pray with you and walk along with you in that process. If you have any questions about your next steps, here at Pathway, are the folks out in the Next Steps area right out the doors. We'd love to have a conversation with you as well. Guys, God bless you. Have a great week. See you. Thank you again for worshiping with us today. If you'd like someone to pray with you, there are members of our church online team or our staff who would love to do that. Simply click on the live prayer button at pccfw.tv or click the conversation bubble on the PCC at Home app. We encourage you to continue your worship through giving. Just click the Give button on the web or the app or text the word GIVE. Finally, be sure to check the web or the app for the latest updates and at-home resources. We also share many updates through Facebook, Instagram, and our weekly e-news, so be sure to follow or subscribe. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon.